Shalom to all the listeners. My name is Chris Nikumana. I'm the host of the Kangoka Broadcast. Today is Friday and I want to discuss again the topic of the resurrection of the dead. I've already talked about this topic many times, but there are some aspects that I often repeat because I've noticed that many people still don't understand them very well. For instance, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 20 verse 6, Blessed is who has part in the first resurrection because the second death has no power over them. They shall be priests of God and of Christ and they shall reign with him a thousand years. Many people often ask about this verse, that's why I keep explaining it. You need to understand that if there is a first resurrection, it means that there is also a second resurrection. But today I want to shed some light on the first resurrection. Please know that this first resurrection will happen after the seven years of tribulation that will precede the coming of Jesus to reign in this earth. In case you didn't know it, Jesus Jesus will come to reign on earth for a thousand years, but before he comes, there will be a seven year tribulation period. Many of you have already heard about the tribulation period and the Antichrist, it will last seven years and then Jesus will come to reign on earth with his church. But you need to understand that when Jesus returns to take his church, many people will be left here on earth and they are the ones who will go through the tribulation period. And those who will refuse to accept the Antichrist and his mark will be be persecuted and killed. The Antichrist will kill anyone who rejects him. The Bible says that he will defeat them and he will kill them. But when Jesus comes to reign on earth for a thousand years, there will be a resurrection of all the people who were killed because they refused the mark of the Antichrist. The sinners will be part of a second resurrection later on and they will be raised to face judgment. You can read about this in Revelation chapter 20 verse 5. It says that the rest of the dead didn't live again until the thousand years were finished. The rest of the dead are the unbelievers who died in their sins. It's those who didn't repent, those who didn't accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, those who lived in sin. They won't be raised from the dead until the thousand years are finished. So the first resurrection is for those who were saved and the unbelievers won't be part of it. The unbelievers will be raised from the dead after a thousand years and that's the second resurrection. I don't wish on anyone to be part of the second resurrection. My wish for all the listeners is that you won't even have to go through the first resurrection. My desire for you is that you will go to be with Jesus when he turned to take his church. That way, the first and the second resurrection will be irrelevant for you. I wish that you will go to meet Jesus when the trumpet sounds so you can avoid the tribulation period and those two resurrections. If you repent and you accept Jesus Christ right now, it means that if you die you will die in Christ and when Jesus returns to take his church you will be raised from the dead and you will go to be with him you won't have to wait for the seven years of tribulation so you can be part of the first resurrection you will be raised when Jesus comes to take his church and you will join him with the believers who will still be alive on that day I hope that you understand this but if you don't repent and you die in your sins it means that you will be part of those who will be raised from the dead after a thousand years you will be part of the second resurrection my wish for you is that you won't be part of that second resurrection i wish that we go up in the air to meet jesus when the trumpet sounds so what's the requirement you need to repent you need to abandon your sinful ways you need to get on your knees and call on jesus so he can be your lord and savior you need to stop living in sin you need to stop fornication if you're living together as a couple outside of marriage you need to repent. If you have aborted babies, you need to repent. If you are living in homosexuality, you need to repent. If you're living in any kind of sin, you need to repent. Get on your knees and call on Jesus so he can forgive you and so you will be able to go up to meet with him and to live with him for all eternity. If you need assistance from a man of God, you can give us a call at plus two five six seven eight one three seven seven three three seven.
now in the second part of the broadcast and we're going to continue our study of the books of Samuel which started on June 13. If you need the broadcast, please go to the archive section of our website or mobile app and listen to all the topics we've already covered so far. Yesterday, I was telling you that if you saved and you're working in the truth, you will always face spiritual attacks. There are evil spirits that oppose you because you are working according to God's plan. Yesterday, we looked at 1 Samuel chapter 20 and we saw that David kept fleeing because Saul wanted to kill him. But there is a difference between David and all of us who are believers. Today we already have the victory because Jesus has already won the victory and we are more than conquerors. If you are taking notes, please write down Romans chapter 8 verse 37. It says that we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. It means that Jesus has won the victory and we are more than conquerors because we walk in his victory. So today the believers don't have to flee like David did. That's because we have already received the victory. We saw in chapter 20 that David was fleeing once again. But Jonathan was trying to convince him that his father can't kill him because he can't do anything without telling him. But Jonathan was young and he didn't fully understand the evil character of his father. So David urged Jonathan to observe his father's reaction to David's absence so he could see that Saul wanted to kill David. And Jonathan eventually realized that his father really wanted to kill David so he decided to help David by warning him about his father's plans. Another important passage I want to highlight in this chapter is verse 14 to 16. It shows the covenant between David and Jonathan. This covenant wasn't just between David David and Jonathan, but it extended to their families. I love this covenant between David and Jonathan. I love how they decided that even if one of them died, the covenant will still be in place and it applies to their families. Today, Satan is defeated because there is a covenant between us and God the Father through the blood of Jesus. The blood that Jesus shed on the cross is the blood of the covenant. If you read verse 30 to 31, you will see that Jonathan finally understood that his father wanted to kill David. He didn't believe it initially, but once he understood that Saul wanted to kill David, he started to help him escape. You can see that in verse 42. I hope that you read all the chapters I ask you to read. So in verse 42, you can see that Jonathan showed David how to escape because he had realized that his father wanted to kill him. I want you to understand why Jonathan was helping David even though he was the son of Saul. He helped him because there was a covenant between them. We need to learn from this. There is a covenant between you and God and this covenant is still in place today. We are in a covenant relationship with God thanks to the work that Jesus did on the cross. Even if Satan attacks you, there is a limit to how he can do because there is a covenant between you and God. I want you to understand that it's because of the covenant that Jonathan made all his efforts to protect David. He kept warning him and protecting him and he accepted the risk of becoming his father's enemy because of the covenant. A covenant is very important and it remains in place even after the person dies. So we are in a covenant thanks to the blood of Jesus and we have received victory thanks to the blood of Jesus. Satan knows that he was defeated. He knows that he was defeated because of the covenant. He knows that the victory was won on the cross and it's over. So, if you are a believer, you can walk in the victory that Jesus has already won. I don't have many things to say about chapter 21. You can see in verse 10 that David fled from Saul and he found himself in front of the king of Gath. Remember that the Goliath was from the city of Gath and all the Philistines who fled when David killed Goliath were from that city. The servants of the king recognized David and they said, Isn't this the one they were singing about when they said Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands? David was scared because they recognized him and he thought that the king would kill him if he knew his identity. God willing, we continue on Monday. Please continue to read all the chapters I ask you to read because I will go over them quickly. I wish you a great weekend and may I am bless you. If you want to repent or you're transformed by these teachings, you can contact us by sharing your testimony in order to edify other listeners by contacting us on plus 256-781-377-337.